I really think, you know, the Fed is, is playing a much bigger psychological game. They're not just tying it on to some economic data that comes out. If I think if they do anything bigger than a quarter basis points, they're going to shock the system. I think it's actually going to be uh, mentally, it's going to give the wrong impression. I think we're in a stage three, the underlying things in the markets have eroded. They just haven't eroded quite enough yet, a little bit more time. And I think they like fall apart and everything starts to slow dramatically. Most asset classes are down with the S&P dropping 1.4% and the NASDAQ down 1.1%. Gold remains relatively flat, while Bitcoin has fallen by 1.7%. The U.S. dollar is stable, and Treasury yields have also declined. To discuss the latest market movements, we're joined by Christopher Vermeulen, Chief Market Strategist at TheTechnicalTraders.com. He focuses on price charts rather than economic data, as he finds that data often lacks clarity. He believes economic reports are as clear as mud. No one really knows what's going on, and even if the numbers meet expectations, it's still just the perspective of those preparing the reports. Inflation in the U.S., as measured by the CPI, is expected to increase at an annual rate of 2.6% in August, down from the 2.9% rise reported in July. The core CPI inflation, which excludes volatile food and energy prices, is seen to stay unchanged at 3.2% in the same period. Meanwhile, the CPI and the core CPI are both forecast to rise 0.2% on a monthly basis, matching July's increase. A rally in the world's largest technology companies spurred a stock market rebound in a volatile session that had Wall Street traders digesting faster-than-anticipated inflation data. The S&P 500 climbed 1.1%, and the Nasdaq 100 rallied 2.2%. It was the first time since October 20, 22, that each gauge erased an intraday loss of at least 1.5%. Chipmakers led gains, with NVIDIA Corporation up 8.2%. Treasury two-year yields rose on speculation that the Federal Reserve would move gradually with rate cuts. Chris Vermoylan noted that recent market momentum shows the stock market has started to weaken over the last four or five trading sessions, indicating the possibility of a sharp decline. He highlighted that the S&P 500 has shifted into a downward trend. We've experienced a sell-off over the past week and a half, followed by a brief bounce last week. But now the market is retreating again, he said. Vermeulen also emphasized that while the stock market is struggling significantly, defensive assets like gold and bonds are holding steady. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. I really think, you know, the Fed is, is playing a much bigger psychological game. They're not just tying it on to some economic data that comes out. If I think if they do anything bigger than a quarter basis points, they're going to shock the system. I think it's actually going to be uh, mentally, it's going to give the wrong impression. So I think they're going to do quarter basis points. Generally, I, I would think the, the data is probably going to support a quarter basis points. I think they're going to ease into it. They don't want to just go lopping off 50 basis points or one because it's going to remove a lot of bullets from their gun when they need it down the road. So um, I think I think the markets are unfolding. The momentum in the last like four or five trading sessions has rolled over on the stock market. And um, I think the, st the stock market is starting to sell off. I think it's primed and ready for actually a fairly sharp leg down, uh, another 4 or 5% drop here maybe over the next week, uh, just because it didn't get any traction last week in terms of uh, reversing and, and recovering. So we are definitely seeing the market struggle here. And other assets are holding up like gold and bonds as a defensive play, which is nice. But uh, the general market, I think, uh, is, is is struggling big time. If we take a look at my charts here real quick, like here's the SP 500. Sure. Uh, we've had a sell off over the past week and a half. It had a little bit of a bounce last week. And and here we are, you know, moving, moving down uh, again today, seeing a pretty big pullback. So if we were to just use some basic analysis, just based on this drop using Fibonacci extension and this bounce, it tells us where this move should most likely go. So Right now, the, the SP 500 is down as we speak about 1.10%. Uh, it has another about you know three and a half percent to drop, and this is just a simple bear flag pattern. Meaning it's dropped, it's created a little bit of a bear flag, which is a pause. It's also known as the halfway point, and then it has the second half of that move. So the market here is primed and ready. If we go and we look at the last time we saw one of these happen, it drops. You have a bear flag, and then it has the second half of that move. And you and I think we're talking last time uh, or a couple of talks ago during that big volatility move in the market. And uh, 
you know, it was a perfect 100% measured move on the NASDAQ. And I, I think we're going to see another drop here in, in equities. And um, so that's when I say I, we're going to see a drop. It's only about a 3.5% drop, which is a lot. But it's I'm not talking about like it's the stock market like end. You know, it's not the top of a major market at this point. It's just a consolidation, a pause. If we were to zoom out on the chart, you know, this this that we're having right here, might just be something like this. It just takes some time to consolidate or something a little longer. Um, so it doesn't mean it's the market top yet. It just short term wise, the trend has turned down. Sellers are in control and um, money is flowing out of equities and into um, different assets. Following the mixed August jobs report, the probability of the Fed lowering the policy rate by 50 basis points at the upcoming meeting declined below 30 percent from nearly 50 percent earlier in the month, according to the CME group FedWatch tool. The U.S. dollar, USD, braces for intense volatility, as any surprises from the U.S. inflation report could significantly impact the market's pricing of the Federal Reserve, Fed interest rate, cut expectations in September. In the bond market, Treasury yields jumped higher after successive declines in prior days. Given that inflation still remains a concern, it seems less reasonable for the Fed to reduce rates by 50 basis points at its meeting next week. Higher rates are the central bank's weapon to fight inflation and it's not time to blunt it through a significant reduction just yet. Analyzing broader economic data, Vermoylan pointed out that unemployment has broken through its two-year moving average, which historically precedes significant economic and stock market crashes. The stock market will collapse, businesses will dry up, and people will stop spending. That's when the recession will hit hard, Vermoylan concluded. Now let's redirect our attention to a video. There, there's a lot of different things. So uh, long story short, I mean, I believe we're in this this kind of stage three topping phase, which is based around Stan Weinstein's theory. If, if people don't know it, they should check out the four stages from Stan Weinstein. But all the things are showing up here in the markets where we're seeing making new all-time highs. Uh, energy stocks are up at major resistance where the market has topped out before. We have industrials at all-time highs. When all of these do very well, if you're actually to compile them together and look at them, these three sectors actually keep going higher in, or sideways while the stock market starts to top out and go and go lower. Um, That's what happened in 2008. Uh, we've seen it in the in the past before other big bear markets. So these are just some high level signs that things are are unfolding where people are moving into gold is kind of a, a global emotional play. People are nervous globally. They're moving into it. Energy stocks, usually we have all kinds of chaos, uncertainty, uh, war going on, something that keeps energy going higher, which oil, I think, is about to drop to like $40, $45 a barrel, and energy stocks are about to get annihilated. And then we have industrials, which actually gauges the sentiment of factories, of um, what warehouses are doing, upgrading assembly lines. And when we see industrials skyrocketing, meaning everyone's upgrading their facilities, their equipment, their assembly lines, usually that's the end of an economic cycle. Mm -hmm. And poor factory owners don't realize they just spent millions upgrading and we're about to like, you know, go off a economic cliff. So there's three different, those three different asset classes kind of give us this warning. All of them are at those levels. Um, you know, we can we can see that in the in this cycle chart here, which is industrials, precious metals, energy are usually near top. If we look at the yellow cycle, which is the economic cycle, I mean, we have unemployment has broken through its two year moving average. Every time it's done this in the past, going like back to the 70s and, and before, we always have some type of major economic and stock market crash, some big reset. Um, we've got full-time unemployment is starting to skyrocket. So people's jobs aren't just being trimmed back on hours. They're actually like, you're fired, you're done. Companies are like cleaning house. They're trimming up. Um, we're seeing a lot of the business sales, um, uh, um, business jobs. When we look at job openings, it's all in manuf Like there's fewer jobs. They're decreasing in manufacturing, um, in business services, mm -hmm. um, uh, transportation, hospitality, luxury stuff. I mean, we're talking about the money is starting to tighten, and and that's those are the things we're seeing. And not not only that, but if you look at the excessive um, spending that investors have, um, they actually uh, have burnt through their savings since after COVID, and now they're actually minus. And so we have unemployment going up. People have now burnt through their savings in the United States, the majority, and we are seeing credit card delinquencies skyrocket. Uh, the largest amount of people have ever had like a 90 to 100 percent maxed out credit card and can't pay is is here. And uh, we're seeing mortgage rates for residential and 
commercial, having huge delinquencies. So, I mean, we're just on the cusp of everything, like everything's really bad and brittle and, and building pressure. There's about to be a break. And that's when like, you know, we're going to see the bottom fall out of the stock market and mm -hmm. businesses are going to dry up. Sales are going to dry up. People's are, are going to start closing their wallets because they're instantly going to see all this be like, holy cow, prepare, prepare to, you know, for a recession. So that's where I am in terms of the big picture, as you asked. The recent market environment reflects a weakening in major asset classes, with the S&P 500 and NASDAQ both experiencing declines while gold remains stable and Bitcoin drops. Treasury yields have also declined, signaling uncertainty. Adding to this, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics has released the latest CPI data for August 2024, showing that the annual inflation rate slowed for the fifth consecutive month to 2.5%, the lowest since February 2021. This is down from 2.9% in July and below the forecast of 2.6%, further indicating potential cooling in inflation pressures. This shift could influence upcoming Federal Reserve decisions, with many now questioning how this data will impact interest rate policy amidst broader market volatility. Do you think the Fed should cut rates further, or will this worsen the economic instability? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.